64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Hello, and happy day. How does slowing down sound to you today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor S.F. Walker. I'm here to remind people to slow down, to reduce the noise, to walk their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back to the Book of the Week series. Every week, as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. And today we look at Total Freedom, The Essential Krishnamurti by J. Krishnamurti. In this video, we look at the discourses of life, the self, meditation, sex, and love, the nature of personal freedom, the mysteries of life and death, and the pathless land, the personal search for truth and peace, warning away from blind obedience to creeds or teachers, celebrating the individual quest for truth. Stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I haven't used that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. Those who seek the complete scheme as originally presented have to depended, depend on unreliable intermediaries such as faith, interpretation, interpolation, and reconstruction. As we move closer to our time, this problem is inverted. Knowledge overtakes wisdom, and culture surrenders to technology. Recordings are comprehensive, but what is recorded is often of lesser value. There is, it seems, a shortage of authentic sages by the numbers. There are plenty who purvey wisdom and pseudo-wisdoms, teachers claiming to possess and provide transcendental insight. However, very few of them survive the test that surely defined a real spiritual pathfinder. The ability to convey a message that is universal and liberating, non-discriminating and free of hatred. A message that is capable of disinterested enrichment of minds and lives, and is also within the understanding of everyone. People do not need guidance, they need awakening. Self-inquiry begins by asking not with what am I, but what am I not? Such a no-nonsense question has no need of theoretical structures, the con conceptual paraphernalia of our deaf psychologies, philosophies, and theologies, and belief systems. The question is astonishingly yet frighteningly simple. Frightening because it, it entails the deepest sense of aloneness, since no one but self can ask the question nor answer it. Yet with the patience, courage, and radical trust to hang in there without bolting from it, one discovers the unlonely aloneness of that meditation, which is absolutely no effort, no achievement, no thinking. The brain is quiet, not made quiet by will, by intention, by conclusion, and all that nonsense. It is quiet. And being quiet, it has infinite space. The devil and a friend of his were walking down the street when they saw ahead of them a man stoop down and pick up something from the ground, look at it, and put it away in his pocket. 
The friend said to the devil, what did that man pick up? He picked up a piece of truth, said the devil. That is very bad business for you, then said his friend. Not at all, the devil replied. I am going to let him organize it. I maintain that the truth is a pathless land, and you cannot approach it by any path whatsoever, by any religion, by any sect. This is my point of view, and I adhere to that absolutely and unconditionally truth being limitless, unconditioned, unapproachable by any path whatsoever, cannot be organized. Nor should any organization be formed to lead or to coerce people along any particular path. Truth cannot be brought down. Rather, the individual must make the effort to ascend to it. You cannot bring the mountain top to the valley. If you attain to the mountain top, you must pass through the valley, climb the steps unafraid of the dangerous precipice. You must climb towards the truth. It cannot be stepped down or organized for you to make men unconditionally free. For I maintain that the only spirituality is the incorruptibility of the self, which is eternal, is the harmony between reason and love. This is the absolute, unconditioned truth, which is life itself. What I want to do is help you, the individual, to cross the stream of suffering, confusion, and conflict through deep and complete fulfillment. This fulfillment does not come through egotistic self-expression nor through compulsion and limitation, not through some, from some fantastical sentiment and conclusion, but through clear thinking, through intelligent action. We shall cross this stream of pain and sorrow. There is a reality which can be understood only through deep and true fulfillment. True collective action can take place only when you the individual, who is also the mass, are awake and take the full responsibility for your action without compulsion. There can be fundamental and lasting change in the world. There can be love and intelligent fulfillment only when you wake up and begin to free yourself from the net of illusions, many illusions which you have created about yourself through fear. Your first concern is to become conscious of the prison. Then you will see that your own thought is continually trying to avoid coming into conflict with the values of the prison. If you look closely, you will see that your search is nothing but a search for comfort and security and escape, not a search for understanding, not a search for truth, but rather a search for evasion, and therefore a search for the conquering of all obstacles. After all, all conquering is but a substitution, and in substitution there is no understanding. What happens when you become conscious of the conflict? What happens when in that intensity of suffering you become fully conscious of the battle, the struggle, which is going on. Most people want an immediate relief, an immediate answer. They want to shelter themselves from that suffering, and therefore they find various means of escape, such as religion, excitement, many mysterious avenues of escape, which we have created through our desire to protect ourselves from this struggle. Suffering makes one conscious of this conflict, and yet suffering will not lead men to that fullness, to that richness, that plentitude, that ecstasy of life, because after all, suffering can only awaken the mind to great intensity. Then it begins to question the environment, the conditions, and in that questioning, intelligence is functioning. 
and it is only intelligence that will lead man to the fullness of life and to the discovery of the significance of sorrow. Intelligence begins to function in the moment of acuteness of suffering, when mind and heart are no longer escaping, escaping through the various avenues which you have so cleverly made, which are so apparently reasonable, factual. If you observe carefully, without prejudice, you will see that so long as there is an escape, you are not solving, you are not coming face to face with conflict, and therefore your suffering is merely the accumulation of ignorance. That is, when one ceases to escape through the well-known channels, then in that acuteness of suffering, intelligence begins to, su begins to function. Individually, we must become conscious. I assure you, you will then individually create something immense, not a society which is merely holding to an ideal and therefore decaying, but a society which is constantly in movement, not coming to a culmination and then dying. Individuals establish a goal, they strive after it, they attain it, and after attaining it, collapse. They try all the time to reach some goal and stay at that stage which they have attained. As the individual, so the state. The state is trying all the time to reach an ideal, a goal, whereas to me, the individual must be in constant movement, must ever be becoming, not seeking a culmination, not pursuing a goal, then self-expression, which is society, will be ever in constant movement. Suffering is merely that high, intense clarity of thought and emotion, which forces you to recognize things as they are. But this does not mean acceptance, resignation. When you see things as they are, in the mirror of truth, which is intelligence, then there is joy and ecstasy in that, that there is no duality, no sense of loss, no division. Is it possible to come to the state where you yourself perceive the truth instantaneously and therefore put an end to confusion? I say that it is. And that is the only possible way. I say it can be done, and it must be done, not based on supposition or belief, to bring about this extraordinary revolution, which is not the revolution to get rid of the capitalists and install another group, to bring about this wonderful transformation, which is the only true revolution. Here's the problem. What is generally called revolution is merely the modification of the continuance of the right according to the ideas of the left. The left, after all, is the continuation of the right in a modified form. If the right is based on sensual values, the left is but a continuation of the same sensual values, different only in degree of expression. Therefore, true revolution can take place only when you the individual become aware in your relationship to another. Surely what you are in your relationship to another, to your wife, your child, your boss, your neighbor, is society. Society by itself is non-existent. Society is what you and I in our relationship have created. It is the outward projection of all of our inward psychological states. So if you and I do not understand ourselves, Merely transforming the outer, outer, which is the projection of the inner, has no significance whatsoever. That is, there can be no significance, alteration, or modification in society as long as I do not understand myself in relationship to you. Being confused in my relationship, I create a society which is the replica, the outward expression of what I am. This is an obvious fact, which we can discuss. We can discuss whether society, the outward expression, has produced me, or whether I have produced society. Is it not, therefore, an obvious fact that what I am in my relationship to another creates society, and that without radically transforming myself there can be no transformation of the essential function of society. When we look to a system for the transformation of society, we're merely evading the question, because a system cannot transform a man. Man 
always transforms the system which history shows. Regeneration is only possible in present, not in the future, not tomorrow. A man who relies on time as a means through which he can gain happiness or realize truth or God is merely deceiving himself. He's living in ignorance and therefore in conflict. A man who sees the time is not the way out of our difficulty and who is therefore free from the false. Such a man naturally has the uh, intention to understand. Therefore, his mind is spontaneous without compassion, without compulsion. When the mind is tranquil, not seeking any solution, not either resisting nor avoiding, it is only then that there can be a regeneration, because then the mind is capable of perceiving what is true, and it is truth that liberates, not your effort to be, tree, to be free. We are turning out as if though by mold, a type of human being whose chief interest is to find security, to become somebody important, or to have a good time with as little thought as possible. An intelligent revolt, which is not reaction and which comes with self-knowledge through the awareness of one's own thought and feeling, it is only when we face experience as it comes and do not avoid disturbance, that we keep intelligence highly awakened. And intelligence highly awakened is intuition, which is the only true guide in life. Most parents are concerned only with the cultivation of some superficial knowledge that will secure their children respectable positions in a corrupt society. So the educator not only has to educate the children in the right way, but also to see to it that the parents do not undo whatever good may have been done in school. Really, the school and the home should be joint centers of right education and should in no way be opposed to each other with parents desiring one thing and the educator doing something entirely different. It is very important that the parents be fully acquainted with what the educator is doing and be vitally interested in total development of their children. What is our basic problem? I think most of us are easily satisfied with explanations, and we do not seem to be able to go beyond mere words and directly experience something original for ourselves. We are always repeating like gramophone records, merely following some authority that promises a certain result. Man is educated to conform to a pattern, not to doubt, not to inquire. And our problem is how to live in this world of envy, greed, conformity, and the pursuit of personal ambition, and at the same time, to experience that which is beyond the mind. Call it God, truth, or what you will. I'm not talking about the God of the temples, of the books, of the gurus, but of something far more intense, vital, immense, something that is immeasurable. Can one look at what is without prejudice, without prejudgment? Can you look at what is without the observer who is past? Say, you are envious of people. How do you look at that envy? Are you looking at it as the observer who is different from envy? You look at it as though you are separate from envy, but the fact is that you are envy. You're not the observer who is different. The observer himself is that. So the observer is the observed. Please, this is really very important to understand. When you have grasped the truth that the observer is the observed, then at that which is observed undergoes radical change. What prevents a radical change of what is, is the interference of the observer who is the past. To understand this removes all conflict. And there you have it, total freedom, the essential Krishnamurti. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Leave a comment. Do share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below so you buy it and you read and you never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you, what innate human need is driving all of your decisions and all of your behavior. And if you feel you are ready, 
to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management even further, do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.